I just got back from an 11-day Southern Caribbean cruise on the Celebrity Beyond. This was my first time on an Edge class ship and my first time in Aqua class. And this video is going to show you the cabin that we stayed in for Aqua class. It was cabin 10261. Is it worth the extra money for Aqua class? Well, I'll tell you about the cabin, and in future videos, I'll tell you about the blue dining room and the thermal suite, and I'll let you decide for yourself. Hi, I'm Sandy from Sandy Over 70. Welcome to my channel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It's free, and it will really help me out. And also, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. The hallways are clean, wide, modern, and well-lit. I put a large magnet on our door. It's a picture of a porthole. I thought it would make it easier to find our cabin. An aqua class stateroom is basically a regular veranda cabin, except for the shower, which I'll show you in detail. The stateroom is spacious. You can move around in it easily. It's modern. It's a contemporary design. And because of that, the storage units are quite a bit different from their other classes of ships. And I think that the closet is smaller. Maybe I just had too much stuff, but I thought it was a little smaller. There were several drawers where I put my things. There is a safe and there is no shelf on the top of the closet and this is a first there's always a shelf on the top of the closet and this is generally where i store my things that i'm not using such as my hats until i need them so these closet doors are kind of hard to open you have to find the ridge here and then I literally cannot open it with one hand. Oh, I did open it with one hand, okay, but with a lot of force. So if you have arthritic fingers, this could be a problem. Also, over the bed, there is always some cabinetry, at least in my experience, and that's where they may or may not store the life preservers. On this ship, the life preservers are not stored in the cabin at all. They are in public areas. They are at your muster station. And so there were no cabinets above the bed. Again, this is a huge loss of storage space. The dresser had three sets of drawers and they were narrow, they were small. And I did get my stuff in there, barely. Also, there were some very tiny, narrow cabinets over when you first come in by the closet that were very difficult to use because they were so narrow and tiny. I squeezed things in there, basically. So I got all of my stuff unpacked. And I'm not a light packer. I'm sorry. Even after 50 cruises, you would think I would know better, but I'm always afraid I've left something home that I might want to wear. So as long as there's space in my big suitcase, I bring it. My husband, on the other hand, doesn't need hardly any space. There's a sofa, kind of chaise lounge type of seating arrangement. It could also be a bed. I mean, I'm sure it could be a single bed. There is a small desk. It's narrow and it doesn't have a drawer in it, and that's another loss of space. I usually put all of my pencils and papers in the drawer to get them out of the way, and there was no drawer because that is a tabletop type of desk that can be pushed in and removed from sight, and that leaves you with access to the full-length mirror. I never pushed it in because I needed that surface to put my stuff on, my makeup and things, and I could see fairly well in the full-length mirror there. I didn't need to push it in. There's also a full-length mirror on the closet door. It's a little hard to see in there because the closet door does not open all the way. 
Also, the space between the bed and the closet is extremely narrow, so you have to be careful when opening those doors. The Infinity Balcony is a new addition to the Edge class ships, and it really is very different. I had a hard time understanding exactly what it was until I saw it myself because it's described as a balcony inside the cabin and that just didn't make sense to me but what it is it's a balcony that's inside the cabin <laughs> it is completely enclosed it makes your cabin quite a bit bigger it has floor to ceiling windows which is really really nice it makes the room very bright and you can just see everything and that was a feature i really liked the window is divided in half and the top half of that window will come completely down allowing the outside air to come in that's good except that it heats up the entire room and messes with the air conditioning so if you want to prevent it from doing that you need to close the folding doors when you go out onto this balcony and when you do that it creates a very very tiny close balcony one of the smallest i have ever been on there's been a lot of controversy about celebrity beyond's veranda cabins and they're actually inside the cabin rather than outside the cabin and I haven't quite made up my mind yet. I think that this balcony is a lot smaller than the traditional balconies on ships. And the window does open halfway and you get the breezes, but it also messes up with the air conditioning. It will heat up the room if it's hot outside. You can close these doors that are behind me, which I've done now, and it makes a tiny little space that you can sit on and have the ocean breezes coming in as I'm doing. But it also, of course, darkens the inside cabin, although these are kind of opaque. It will let in some light. There are switches on the wall that um, you can open and close it. Um, there's a shade that comes down at night, and it makes the room as dark as an inside cabin. And, and that can be good because some people need dark to sleep. On the other hand, if you don't have a flashlight or something, <laughs> you can really bump into the wall. Now the good thing is that the bathroom has under sink lighting and if you leave your door open, you'll be able to find the bathroom easier. So uh, this is really revolutionary. It's something no other cruise line has tried yet. And it will be interesting to see if other lines follow suit or if it goes out of style in the future. There's another feature to this window, and that is at any time you can close the window completely and press the button on the side wall there or at the entrance to the cabin, and a light blocking shade will come down and completely cover the window from floor to ceiling. This absolutely blackens the room. Did I like the infinity balcony? I thought about it throughout the whole cruise and I waffled back and forth. And my personal opinion is that I prefer the old fashioned kind of balcony where you could sit out there where it's more spacious, you can enjoy the sea air and the views but it doesn't disrupt the air conditioning in the rest of the cabin. Now, if I was taking perhaps an Alaska cruise during cooler weather or even a New England or Canada cruise during cooler weather, then it really wouldn't make any difference because I generally don't sit out on the balcony if it's cold outside. In that case, this window, floor to ceiling window, which enlarges the space in the cabin, would be a really good feature, and I would say, yes, I like it. 
Next, I'm going to give you an extremely detailed tour of the bathroom. I'm going to tell you the good and bad features of this bathroom in the Aqua Class Cabin. Now, first of all, it's a good size. The next thing is that the shower is nice size, very nice size. And you can move around in there. It's probably one of the biggest showers I've been in on a ship. I'm here to demonstrate the use of the shower in this Aqua Class cabin. Let's see if I can do it flawlessly. There are two knobs that I can see, top and bottom. Now I am told that I am to take this lever here and push it to turn it on. Ugh. Ugh. I'm afraid if I step in here and do it, I'll get wet. Ugh. Okay, that's not working. Let me turn it this way. Okay, this seems to be doing something. Okay, that turned on the handheld thing, but I don't want the handheld thing, so. Whoa! Okay, let me turn this. And we get, ooh, okay, we get the one coming down. We can get it coming out, but what if I want both? I don't know. Let me see if I get both. Oh, and then we have some water coming out of here. And then I understand there's a slot there where I can get some water, but I don't know. Okay, let me see what I'm. Oh, okay, that's it. Woo! All right. All right, so if I was taking a shower, I think the one thing I would want is this rain shower. I wonder how you get hot water. Maybe if I turn this. No? Oh, yes. Okay. I'm getting hot water. Oh, that feels good. Okay. Now how do I turn it off? Oh, let me turn up here. Okay. That's off. And that's how you use the shower. Unlike the rest of the cabin, we have adequate storage up here, there's shelving, there's counter space on each side, and shelving on each side, so that's good. And then in addition, there's shelving down here, plenty of space to put extra things, no problem with storage. But here's a funny thing, I have never had a sink that had a drawer under it because that's where the plumbing is and if I hadn't paid attention to the cabin steward I wouldn't know that this is a drawer which it is and in the drawer is where the hair dryer is this is the largest sink I've ever had in a cabin one of the strange features in this cabin is that the mirror is hot and I don't mean warm I mean hot whereas I almost can't leave my hand on there and it took a while to figure out why this might be and I'm still not sure I think it for sure is to keep the mirror from steaming up when you're in here and it may also be to warm the bathroom because I can feel the heat actually coming out toward me so this is the lighting panel and I'm going to show you what it's like when I press evening. Isn't that neat? Yeah. And then we have another option, movie. Let me Wow, even darker, isn't it? We haven't actually used that one. And then we have sleep. Which is pitch black, really. It's as though you had uh, an inside cabin. This concludes the tour of my Aqua Class cabin. I hope it was helpful for you. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.